Well, hello again, folks, and welcome back to the homestead. Today, I'm going to share one of my all-time favorite recipes with you all. I call it a seafood stew, although I don't always use seafood. Sometimes I use just fish for this. I don't call it a chowder because most chowders I've ever had have potatoes and onions in it, and this has neither. But call it what you want. Call it a stew. Call it a chowder. Give it a go. I can guarantee you'll be calling it delicious. <laughs> so let's get started. For this, I don't usually use my cast iron for it. I prefer stainless steel. I usually put it together in this deep skillet here with a cover. Of course, you can use a stainless steel pot or whatever kind of cookware you desire. Now, I don't follow any specific recipe for this. I just kind of wing it every time I put it together. Like I said, sometimes I use all fish today. I'm using some cod with some shrimp. Sometimes it's a conglomeration of a bunch of different seafoods. I'll show you the rest of the ingredients that I'm using here today. Today I've got about a pound or so of cod with a pound or so of shrimp. If I was using just fish, I would use about two, two and a half pounds of fish for this. Uh, I've used haddock, I've used flounder. Just a nice, mild tasting fish works best. I'm going to use about six or seven slices of Munster cheese. I like a nice mild cheese. I'm not putting it in there for the cheese flavor, but for the consistency, because when this melts down, it's going to offer a nice creamy consistency to my stew. I don't use anything with a strong cheese flavor. Oh, I'll use about that much garlic, which I'll crush. A handful of tomatoes, six or seven or whatever couple of yellow squash about that size with a, almost an equal amount of zucchini and a few tomatoes and that's about it so I'm going to get the tomatoes and the zucchinis and the mushrooms all sliced up crush the garlic and get started fresh garlic is much more flavorful than the store-bought stuff you find in a jar I highly recommend it That's a handy little item right there. Does a beautiful job mincing up that garlic. I'll let the garlic and the mushrooms get a head start while I chop up the vegetables. It smells great in here just with that garlic cooking. Oh, it's good stuff. Okay, since that's got a head start, I'm going to go ahead and Start throwing in the squash here. Now, of course, you can cut your squash up into smaller pieces if you prefer. Myself, I like to just throw them in there whole. They simmer down real easy with the cover on. I break them up with a wooden spatula. When I'm eating it, I like to have the different sized chunks in my bowl as opposed to having everything look like it went through a food processor. But of course, they're probably going to taste the same no matter how you do it. I just take my time with it. It's a very easy recipe to do. It's just not quick and easy. Oh, yeah. Looking good. Now, I prefer to use fresh tomatoes when I have them on hand instead of using canned ones, but the canned ones would be fine. Like I said, there's no specific routine that you need to follow here. We're just putting a bunch of ingredients in the pan, letting it simmer down to like a stew or chowder-like consistency. I'm going to let the tomatoes simmer down now, and then I'm going to put in the fish and the cheese. I'm going to put the shrimp in last. That's cooking down real nice. 
Now looking at it, you wouldn't think that these ingredients would go really good with fish and seafood, but they do. Once all of this simmers down and all those flavors mingle together, it's some good eats. Alright, I'll lay some fish in there. I'm just going to let that cook down for a little while, break the fish apart, put in the cheese, and then everything's just going to simmer. It only takes a few minutes for the fish to soften enough to stir into the mix. With that accomplished, I'll follow the same process with the cheese. Oh yeah, that's looking good. I decided I'm going to throw in some scallops, a few nice scallops in there, and the shrimp. Looking good. I'm going to let that cook now for maybe 20 minutes or so, just until the shrimp and scallops are done, but I want them to remain firm. I didn't put them in in the beginning because I don't want them to turn mushy. Sometimes I'll put in a little dash or two of half and half just to make it a little bit more creamy. But that Munster cheese will do a good job of that on its own. Then simmer the concoction for a few hours and oh, serve it up. <laughs> so a little salt and pepper to taste. And that's all the seasoning that I use for this recipe. I'm going to enjoy a bowl of it right now, and then the rest of that's going to go in the refrigerator. I'm going to have it for tomorrow's supper. I have found by making this over the years that whenever I had the leftovers the following day, it was that much better. So I have a bowl. The day that I make it, the rest goes in the fridge for about 24 hours, and it reaches its full potential that way. Give it a try. Change the concoction to your liking. It's not hard to do. I'm certain you'll be glad you did. Bon appetit. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did and you'd like to see more of the cabin life, please click the subscribe button so that you can follow along with future updates. All the best to you and God bless.